welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode, we're looking at object oriented testing. So, it's like software testing in general, but just in using object oriented features, classes, and methods, and libraries, and things like that. So, we know that testing is very important. Testing is necessary to ensure that your code works. And we know also that the more complex your programs get, the more you add code in. If you find a problem and then change it, you have to be very careful to make sure it doesn't cause side effects or problems with other parts of the code. So it definitely becomes more and more difficult to manually test each possible path of execution, each if, each then, each else, as the code grows larger. So then we need to look at more ways of automating our testing. So to handle this, we write what are called automated tests. These are programs that automatically run uh, certain parts of the, certain inputs into the system. And we can run these and re rerun them over and over again, rather than, let's say, if we were testing whether a, a, an age field, running the program, putting in a particular age, then running the program again, putting in a different age, running the program again, putting in a different age. We'd call that manual testing, whereas if we've got another program that feeds in a, a, a string of values, then that's automated testing. In terms of why we test, there's four reasons why we test, and particularly, uh, most importantly, I think it helps make sure the code is working as well. It makes sure if I do changes, that that doesn't cause problems. So if I fix a, a problem, that that fix doesn't cause further problems. So we need to retest to make sure there's no problems there. We might use a term like refactoring, and that all that means is retesting the code once we make changes in it. It definitely testing makes sure that the developer actually understands what they were supposed to be doing and, and definitely helps ensure that the interface is, is maintainable and fixable if there's any problems. So I want to talk about a specific philosophy of testing, but it's actually a philosophy of software development, a software engineering model called test-driven development. As the name suggests, the tests drive the development. So what does that mean? Well, the mantra of test-driven development is write the tests first. So before you've even written any code at all, decide what tests you want to do. And um, once you've all the test plans written out, start developing code then. I uh, enjoy test-driven development a lot. I think it's a very fun approach because it's all about solving the puzzles before you start coding. It's all about thinking what possible test inputs should I test for this system what possible way could I put in inputs so that I can test all the branches, all the conditions, all the loops, all the if statements. So really, test-driven development has two goals. One is to ensure that the tests are actually written, because sometimes when developers write code first and they, the code kind of compiles, then they think, oh, well, there's no problem point writing tests because the code seems to be OK. So test-driven development ensures that tests are actually developed and most importantly, I think it's that they understand how the code works and in particular, what different objects or classes or processes or modules will talk to this particular program or process. So that's um, introduction to testing and test driven development. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode. Okay. <coughs>